Hello and welcome back to the EU Challenger League playoff semi-finals. As you can see, we've got another one coming right up thick and fast. We are not stopping here tonight. My name's Ian Chambers and the desk just magically got so much better looking. I am joined by Anne Fox and Anne. Guys, welcome to the desk. Before we get stuck into previewing our next best of three, Death Row progress to our upper bracket final with Hellraisers failing to raise the bar, could you say, Anthox? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yes. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah, I mean, spot on. It was indeed, we, we might have had higher expectations of Hellraisers here and yeah, unfortunately for them, they couldn't make those expectations true. I mean, even Demo, even X, they said, you know what, this is going to be a three mapper. I think we said the same. I think Hellraisers just felt bad for me. They know I have to take an early morning train tomorrow back to Amsterdam. <laughs> so they're like, you know what? Let's uh, let's just throw and uh, and have that row in this one. Do you know when we first started this, we were talking about the Dutch accent, and I've grown to absolutely love it. Over do you? This. Yeah, I do. But I mean, I want you to say crocodile <laughs> swamp one more time. Crocodile swamp. Oh, I just love the way you say swamp. Say swamp one more. Swamp. <laughs> oh, it's swamp. Swamp. <laughs> what are you doing in my swamp? <laughs> swamp. Swamp. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you came right over to this desk and you thoroughly enjoyed that first series there. Oh yeah, it was really good. I love seeing that. I mean, I think I might become a little bit of a Death Row fan after seeing that game. Definitely. I I really like to see both teams really. I would have wanted that game to go to the third map. It was so tense. I mean, let's not forget, Death Row has the only remaining Benelux player, you know? Yes, of also course. Good reason they're, too. they're the only, it's our only opportunity. It all to makes sense make now. Into... Right, let's put that series in our rear view mirror and now switch our attention to Eminem versus Totem. Of course, Eminem are coming into this. In theory, you know, in a lot of eyes of the fans, um, as the favourites, right? And Totem are coming in as the underdogs. However, Totem have shown what they're made of. But then on the other side of that coin, so of Eminem, let's talk about it because this is actually a rematch, isn't it? Anne? It is, yeah. Both teams come from the A group and they've played against each other once before. It was an Oregon. Eminem managed to win, to win that game 7 2, so a quite strong performance, you would say, from them. But yeah, we've seen Totem cause an upset before. Yes, we have. And it's a similar story for Totem as it was really in the quarterfinals, and Fox. They, they beat one of the favourites to get here. Definitely. What's to stop them doing it again here? Yeah, that's a, that, that, that is the, 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 the biggest question. Was it a one time thing? Was it a one hit pony? Uh, one hit pony. A one time <laughs> wonder? Yeah, that's it. Are you mixing right? up two seconds? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> that, you know, that's usually. Yeah, I mean, that's my trademark. Everybody back that. in the Benelux knows that. W no, let's stick with that. Are they a one hit pony? A oh. one hit pony. <laughs> Poor pony. Right? <laughs> Why is the pony getting hit? Uh, no, are they a one-trick pony? Um, you know, it's something that uh, that time will tell. And I personally think that Totem will come out of the uh, will come out of the uh, yeah gates with some surprises. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, Eminem have obviously got an incredible roster, and it would be rude to not give everyone a heads up if you didn't see the quarterfinals that they need to be looking out for a certain player. Yes. Are we going to mention that player again? Should we mention this player? <sighs> okay, yes, okay. I think we should. Let's it's, talk about uh, it. It's users on the roster. If you followed a little bit of the game last time, if you've perhaps seen some statistics from the players, Yuzus has been on top of most of them. Is on top of the KD rating, is on top of the, the regular rating, on top of cost, I think, as well. Currently, he's going 11-0 in entry, which means he's got an 11 entry kills, but has never been the entry death before. So definitely one of the players you have to watch out to to cause that early chaos into the round. Yeah, and he's building, you know, some strong foundations to become the MVP of this entire tournament, Anthox. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, it, it, it also comes with its cons. I mean, the pressure on him is, in, is immense, of course, and today will also prove whether he can handle that pressure or not. We've been hyping him up. The chat has been hyping them up. You know, Twitter has been hyping him up. Can he live up to that hype? That is the question. I mean, it's immense pressure. You have a switch. Yeah. You, you, you told me earlier today, like, you know, you always feel that pressure for every show, mm -hmm. but then 10 seconds before, it just disappears. Does users have that Does switch? Does users have that say? switch? Okay. That's the question. Well, let's switch onto the maps right now and see where we are going for this best of three. Anne, over to you. Ooh, okay. Um, the fact that they've left Oregon in is pretty interesting, seeing as Eminem already beat Totem before, 7-2 on Oregon. I'm surprised it isn't the first map then by Totem then, but it's okay. Eminem picks that map, and then Totem goes for Clubhouse, which might be interesting as well. They have played on Clubhouse versus Stars. That was a 7-0 win for them in their group phase. Um, and then the side of Chalet. Yeah, we're kind of repeating what we've just seen, right? Except from Chalet instead of Bank. Yeah, so we're Bank is Bandas first, so yeah. Exactly, so we're going to Oregon again, we're going to Clubhouse again. 
the question is, have these teams just watched that and kind of are copying things of that? I don't think so. I think it's a bit too soon to their own uh, games. They've probably had warm-up scrims, as we call them. So I'm, I'm expecting completely different uh, the, the maps to be com played completely different to what we've just seen. Well, we're talking about the scrimming. Like, let's talk about Turton because they're yeah. actually currently in boot camp. That's true. So they are training and playing physically together exactly. as we speak. That's got to be an advantage, Anne. Yeah, I mean, if you can literally look at your teammates' screen, whilst you've died, for example, you can give them some instructions or you can just hype them up when they get that sick clutch. That really helps your mental. I've actually had a little bit of contact with Azen right before the, the broadcast today, and I asked him, like, was this a planned boot camp or was it spontaneous? And he said it was actually planned. Um, they, of course, also have the Italian uh, finals coming up. And I asked, okay, what, how's the mental? And he said, amazing, couldn't be better. You know, we're here having fun. We're trying to get the highest results as possible. But if we don't get there, we're still having fun as a team. I mean, Bootcamp changes everything. So that could might be proved to be detrimental for MM Gaming. Thank you for that insight. Let's get stuck into this, shall we? And let's not forget that lower bracket is looking even more crocodile swampy <laughs> with Hellraisers <laughs> down there as well. So you do not want to drop if you can. Let's throw over now to our amazing casters to get into our first map here. It's MM versus Totem with Demo and X, the other two. Thank you very much indeed, Ian. We are ready to be getting stuck into this one. We're lucky, Demo. We get to cast Eminem yet again. We got them, of course, a yep. couple of days ago, and we have them here and now. Obviously, a slight bit of bias on the desk. Less bias in the social vote. Don't know what you're talking about with the bias. 45. No idea what you're talking about. 45 to 55. See, everyone forgets that I, I simply hate users, don't I? Simply detest them. You were, to be fair, you were slagging him off before we even got on the show. Hate him. Just... You know, you just look at something and think, it's the same hatred I have for Ian sometimes. Oh. Whenever he tries to, you know, Oof. make me look like a fool. Burn. Mm hmm Kicking off here, second upper bracket semi-final of the night. Totem, Eminem Gaming, Oregon. The same two maps to kick things off as we saw in our first upper bracket semi-final. Eh? I'm imagining we're hitting a recost. <laughs> yeah. This is not Helios. I was about to say, have, have, we, not, <laughs> have we ended up in the wrong game, Ollie? <laughs> Do not adjust your sets. Uh, something not quite right inside of that lobby, hitting the rehost straight off the rip. I panicked for a little bit. I had a little bit of a thought, have we prepared for the right game here? Was this is a very Helios strategy. Maybe it's a bold strategy. Everyone wants to be like Helios these days. Who knows? I mean, it's one way to come into Oregon, isn't it? To be fair, we were speaking before about how bans on Oregon yeah. are becoming a little bit more... Not irrelevant, but you've got to question the relevancy of a Hibana ban. You've got to question the relevancy of a Maverick ban, given that you've not only got the freedom now with the hard breach gadget to bring that extra piece of utility, but you can often find the nades from elsewhere as well. Yeah, I think nades have been the biggest thing that we're starting to see with Oregon. I think overall, um, it's just that kitchen area has had a lot more traffic these days. I think Kitchen has been the high value target for both sides. The the vertical destruction that you can get, I think Buck has also played a big part in that. You can essentially nullify an entire bomb site just from below. Exactly. And obviously with Buck bringing the hard breach gadget, it's it's something that we've seen play out recently mm. inside of other regions. I'm obviously a, a little bit um, a little bit more biased toward the Latin America region, the BR6, given that that's what I cast on the regular. But Buck has been a massive operator on Oregon for that reason. The vertical control that you're able to get when you're attacking into that kid's site. Obviously, you spoke before about the nades that you can throw vertically as well. All these things really coming in and it is shaping the way that Oregon plays out. You throw into that the fact that a Hibana ban doesn't mean as as much mm. anymore um, it really does start to start to differently shape how Oregon plays particularly for the attackers I can hear in my ears that the game is getting underway so I imagine we're just going to perform a couple last second checks before throwing us on in but that we can see is the players faces light up as they are greeted with the beautiful sight that is Oregon on their screens we'll give this one another try round two here at getting this game underway Totem to ban first. And we're going to get a ban. We're going to get a thatch ban. That's what we rehosted for. That's what we rehosted for. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, of course not. Yeah, Thatcher, no surprises in that department. Again, I think after how both teams performed, neither of them will try and play fancy. I think Eminem summed it pretty well. You know, just get in there, does the job. 
Totem, obviously, if you look at who they played against, it was against Makers, who was a side that was expected to win that matchup. You know, Makers were expected to go in and absolutely trump Totem and send them down into the lower bracket, but it was an Uno reverse card in many situations in that game. And now we're here with Totem having a, an opportunity to get into the upper bracket. Imagine if we're sitting at the end of the night, Ollie, an upper bracket final is Totem versus Defro. Who would have predicted that? Not a lot of people, that is for sure. Also, not a lot of people would have maybe predicted the Flores ban. A little bit of something out of the ordinary from Eminem. It, again, speaks to this new change and this new flexibility that can be found. The Barna this time available, so no requirement to bring too much of the secondary hard breach gadgets. I mean, the thing about the Flores ban is it essentially will fortify the, uh, the elbow downstairs in blue. Yeah, for sure. That's what it's all about. If you look at Eminem on Oregon, they always have that extension. That's where they want to get into. You'll see the extension in, the shield goes down, no problems at all. So, we're seeing Totem. They have the castle. This is an interesting operator that we've seen kind of develop inside of Oregon. The fact that you now have four barricades, it means that holding upstairs inside of Meaton, which was something that was fairly common that, that we have seen before, it now just helps that even more so. Yeah, the extension that Castle can provide is uh, pretty substantial. And we've seen a lot of Castle played because of that. One extra Castle Barricade is really a small change on the face of things, but it is quite huge. And look at where Eisen is actually choosing to use these. He's got one on the, on the window at the bottom of White Stairs. There's a big extended setup going on inside of Kitchen as well. Another castle barricade going down. There's a Naruni gate onto the door into kitchen. Goyo shield just placed next to the counter. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's belt and braces. We're going for a Rooney and the castle barricade on that wall. So, I guess Eminem, the path of least resistance, is going to be a push through bunker. You would expect that. Obviously, if you look at how the setup is for Totem, it is very heavy in towards kitchen and towards meeting, which is expected considering their lineup. Everyone will be sitting there thinking, okay, guys, what we're going to do is just walk into blue, play very minimalistic. We don't have to worry about the guys upstairs. The only difference, though, that, that would probably make you think otherwise is the fact that the meat and hatch, it is not reinforced. It is open. E-box hatch is open. So if you're trying to push in through blue, with that hatch being open, you cannot do anything. You cannot try and stabilize a push unless that hatch is in your control. That covers so many different angles, and it really slows down the attackers if a defender is playing on top of that. So since the team is holding in towards meeting, it almost forces you in to having to take control of meeting. There's a big clear that's required here for Eminem. We've got DJ playing upstairs inside of Attic. He's on the Aruni, so if required, he's going to be able to open the hatch and drop on through. But it looks as though he's more likely going to find himself an engagement as he does just put a couple of warning shots down to all the players stacked up inside of T2. Eminem now have control of Big Tower. Soltov is going to try and position himself at the bottom of these back stairs. You wonder if the information's been gathered at this point from Eminem and they've got an accurate idea of where everyone is, but you can just see defenders dropping halfway through the round and already they feel as though that extension was worthwhile. You see them start to open up that meeting wall right now, so they will try and target that meeting side, which again is expected from them. We can see Solzov just on the back there, seeing if he can do anything he can. I mean, one thing to keep in mind, Ollie, is his shield. It's a Goyo shield on pillar. Twitch drone can sneak in, eliminate that. However, it has quickly been rotated. Neos can't decide where to put it. They're actually just backing up further and further. They've got a little bit of utility placed here inside of Freeze. They've got the bulletproof looking toward the bottom of the stairs. So they're going to have an idea if a flank is attempted. Pocket reinforcement going up now as well. It's a very well designed hold here from Totem. They've obviously got very clear points within the round time-wise as to when they want to start dropping themselves back and how they're going to use any remaining utility as they do so. Eminem now can start that final approach though as opportunities don't do become available to them. Got a couple of C4s in hand. User's going to send through a nade. It's responded to with a C4. Neither connect, but Mowgli gets chunked down in the process. That Goyo shield is going to be fairly vulnerable there as well. I'm not believing that there's going to be an ADS there to back it up, but the kills start to come in. Neo, where's he been to pick two? Nello's found one. Solotov downed in the process, but the plant is being confirmed. Neox not in position to push on through. Can confirmed the already downed Solotov as Mowgli picks up onto Nello. Still a retake here and a three versus. Is one now as Yuzis chalks one up for himself. Neox 
Not an easy position to be in. He's going to be able to aggress up. He can find out where the diffuser is, but there's very likely a crossfire held onto this. Gets himself into E-Box and Tyrant picks him on up. Great round from Eminem. It was looking a little bit sketchy. We see a stack load of utility still on the board for Totem. The C4, we had smoke canisters, but all credit goes down to Neo. Neo got his kills, Ollie, from Elbow. He was the man who had to go for that very difficult gunfight up against the smoke. We've seen smoke players in that position, Ollie, just tarnish lineups, you know, like it's nothing. And the fact that Neo was able to win that engagement and then get himself into Elbow and then get another kill to open up the bomb site. He did phenomenal in that scenario. And then from there, we know what Nell is like. He doesn't stop planting. All he has to do is get that diffuser down. And from that position, it's over. Yeah, you give Nell the opportunity and he is going to nail that diffuser to the floor every single day of the week. Eminem did a really good job of managing the clock there. Mm. I think they, they got that clear done nice and early on. They were able to force back Totem. I commented at the time, we saw the players that were that were playing these extensions inside of Kitchen actually drop back yeah. at around the halfway point mm. in the round. I would argue there's option for them to stay up there a little bit later. Hold it a little bit firmer. Sure, you're going to lose a couple of lives in the process, but you're also going to burn a lot more of the clock. They put so much utility into Kitchen. Eminem had no interest in Westside yeah. whatsoever. We've seen them rotate utility. What was to stop them rotating utility from Kitchen to then try and defend meeting from playing deep? You can have control split. Eminem were pushing from one side of the map and one side of the map only. It is a bit like, I would say, Old Oregon, whenever Old Oregon just used to be take big tower and that was it. That's all you had to take. Eminem have kind of replicated that in many senses. So it is strange to see them not rotate and actually put up a fight because it was very, very easy, like you said. Lemon well, are going for a different approach here. They know there's going to be somebody in and around the bottom of White Stairs. Mowgli, the player in position. Eminem's information gathering in that drone phase must be pretty top tier because they now know that this side of the map isn't being as heavily fortified. There's a very different setup that actually that has actually gone down, gone on downstairs by Totem. New York's lying in wait with a C4 ripped and ready. Nobody trying to push in upstairs at the moment though. But Eminem are heavily stacking up now. They're taking advantage of the lack of utility in this round as opposed to the last. Zolotov's already got himself into Attic as well. Should be relatively straightforward from here for Eminem to move on through, get the hatching security open and try and work in onto that meeting. Yeah, different approach this time from Eminem, taken from Laundry Freezer appears to be. So a, a certain switch up by all accounts. We'll have to go up against those mirror windows, Ollie, which is usually the bane uh, of the existence of the laundry and freezer takes. But then again, Eminem are a team that we've seen constantly take a twitch. It was something that was highlighted a lot during their Ascend game and something that we're now seeing in Oregon against them. The freedom to bring Twitch into the lineup as opposed to something like a Zafia when you're going to bring the Ayana is pretty massive. I think the fact that also Twitch has the smokes is, is another massive yeah. selling point, isn't it? Um, as people might know, me and Ollie are great at selling operators. We true. big fans of selling Maverick in terms of what he can do yeah. if you're dealing with a Thatcher ban. And equally, if you're dealing with mirrors on the board, Twitch is going to be your best friend. It really is. It's the direct counter. Mm -hmm. Also a fan of a, a good Nomad sale as well. Sometimes yeah. Nomad's on 50% off. Whenever a team's been flanked for the fifth time, that's yeah. whenever we, we kind of urge them to please bring the Nomad. But Put a buy one, get one free on. At the moment, Totem, first round didn't show any signs of flanking, very similar to what we've seen earlier uh, from Hellraiser, just played very default on site. And once again, Ollie, Eminem have about 35 seconds to go. That's not a lot of time to execute. They're still up against C4, still up against free smoke canisters. This is going to be another round that I'll be really interested to see if Eminem can pull out. They've not actually used the smoke to cross either. Solosov does still have another in pocket, but it's not enabled them to get through Freezer at the moment. We're seeing Toxic Babes now being pushed in onto Laundry as Neo does get shut down slowly. He's going to really struggle to try and make use of the Hibana Palace. The C4 comes out and it nets two, three kills instantly there for Totem as they open up in a very big way indeed. Five seconds left. Uses is desperately trying to vault over to try and find the player inside a cubby, but it will not be. No, nope, that ended very badly for Eminem. Again, easy for Totem. They just knew they had to sit back, relax. They had the mirror windows, which was the dominant factor in that round. We seen that they tried to pressure the mirror windows using the Habana pellets. That's not going to work if Kai's on the board, which yeah. was shown 
Very well by Tome. Putting a kind of charge, no issues at all. That mirror window is going to be st stuck there for the remainder of the game. And a double C4 kill. It sums it up. You have the vision. Even though you might have the smokes, it's still, I think, pretty easy whenever you know there's only 15 seconds left just to C4. You know it's going to work. We saw those electroclaws actually getting juggled, juggled around a little bit as well. Yeah. Because there was an electroclaw on the meeting hatch. Yeah. The wall into Freezer was also electrified at some point inside of the round, and then the wall into Cubby was electrified yeah, as well. Yeah. So those electroclaws were getting moved here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it again just shows how willing Totem are to set things up and then move them later on into the round when it is more when it is sort of better used elsewhere. So this does mean that Totem have to go to another bomb site. Moving in towards the upstairs now. Interesting reinforcement there, that single wall in towards meeting, that kind of leads me to believe that Totem will in fact try and hold Kitchen, which has been the most common thing that I think we've seen throughout Org and his teams, they always want to try and hold on to this Kitchen. With how volatile nades have been these days, and just I think over the past six months, teams always try and slip into Kitchen and start nading your players here inside a kid's bedroom. It makes a lot of sense to try and put up a bit of a fight. I, I do hope Totem put up a bit of a fight, because we've seen them try an extension whenever they were defending Basement. Yeah. They didn't really put up a fight, they fell back very early on. I hope we get to see some action with the Roamers this time. I'm mean, investing very heavily into grenades here. They're actually bringing six. Mm -hmm. We know somebody like Tyrant, for example, is pretty skilled at throwing those nades vertically. Getting in control of Kitchen could be a big win here. There's no book in play, but of course, it's not always 100% required. You can still throw those nades vertically and try and get a little bit of success that way. And that for the moment looks as though it's going to be the main focus, although you've got to kind of worry about the site in this sort of an instance. If Eminem get a sniff that the site is relatively open and ready for the taking, there may be an opportunity where they just get a little bit of pressure downstairs and then make that quick jump up on into the site. But those C4s are going to have to be dealt with. Yeah, the only issue also with the kind of lineup that Totem have brought, a lot of utility, so any kind of rushes is going to be... Put down pretty swiftly. You have the Banshees, you have the Goyo Shields, you have Protection as well. That's a great pick from Uses. have to question, though, why is Melissa being caught out in that position, sprinting across? Again, it looked as if Totem, they were trying to get a quick escape, which was something we didn't want to see. We want to see them put up the fight because they have essentially gifted Eminem downstairs control with still half the round to go. And they also got a pick from it. Totem are too happy to set up the stall and stay there for a minute and 30. And then as soon as that time hits, 1.30, 1.33, the, these guys are moving. These guys are looking for that next out, that next place to hold. Tyrant will be successful with the grenade onto Mowgli. Believe it was thrown vertically. Yes, it was. We can see the little hologram from the Jaeger there. I called it out at the start of the round. He's very adept at getting that nade off and timing it well. And obviously working in off the back of that information gathered as well. Eminem Reasonable advantage here. Still got a minute left to try and execute more nades flying on in, but it's going to be solid off to take down Diju. Link, he gets oh, absolutely peppered as he tries to make his way and rotate in through kids. Neox, going to be the last line of defense. And well, that was right. was on the wall very quickly at the start of that round. Eminem just going up and up and up. Yeah, I mean, that, that kill that happened uh, through the wall, that wall wasn't even reinforced. You know, I, th I think usually whenever you're trying to hold in towards kids, at least one of the walls is reinforced to give yourself just a bit of protection, but not that time around. So, bit of a bit of a worry there for Totem. A round that looks if they were set up fairly well, I think, considering how Eminem were attacking it, it was the correct setup. But once again, as soon as the first man starts, you know, entering in towards dining, they're gone. They're not hanging around. They're not sticking yeah. around. And you have to question why. Yuzis didn't waste utility. There was no drones. He was just standing holding an angle, and somebody just runs into the angle. You've got a question if Totem are in a, in a sort of headspace or a mindset where they are just trying to play down the, the sort of to-do list that they have mm. written pre-map. And then if they're like, we're going to off-site hold for half the round yeah. and then move. You can't play as strict as that. You can't do those things. You cannot just say, this is how we're going to approach this game. You need to be willing to adapt on the fly. And Totem, they're putting themselves into great positions to actually hold these offsides, but they're not actually going through with it. So we see another switch up from Totem. This time now, they're going to try and hold it in towards bedroom. You can see the utility be in place. So they forfeit at Kitchen. 
which was the attack that Eminem had kind of stemmed from and trying to utilize the grenades. But now Eminem have no interest in going for the west side. Now Eminem are looking as if they're going to be gearing up for a bedroom. Strange. I don't know. I've told him just big brain this. He's told him no. Now all I mean, of a sudden Eminem switch up after they've. I don't know. I mean, the question is who's big brain and who? Because this yeah. is exactly how we saw the first two rounds go on laundry. We saw exactly the same thing in Eminem's mm -hmm. approach versus Totem's setup. And this time it's the flip reverse. Eminem are actually attacking into the setup that has been generated by Totem. We've already seen two opening kills. We've not even seen a minute. We've not even seen either of these kills. Oh, no. <laughs> nasty nade from Tyrant. That's the second nade that he's got away with like that. Demo, 50, 55 seconds. And we've seen three kills. I don't know what's, what, what, what Totem are doing. Uh, are they just giving three kills away? Seems like it. Looks as if Aizen's also going to meet his demise as he tries to swing in towards Armory, takes a lot of damage. But you can look at the patience from Eminem, Ollie. That they, would, yeah. They're not given any chance of a comeback. They are going to finish this out in, in, high, in high numbers. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a flawless, because all they really have to do now is just carry out a simple execute. Double up, make sure you have your refrags. They're going to know that Totem are going to be playing, I think, up against it. Look at the HP from Totem. Should be fairly easy to finish it off from this point. It's something that I was going to bring up if you didn't, and that is the patience that's been shown at this point by Eminem. A flawless round, as you say, Demo. The amount of time that goes between that first kill coming through and the round finishing, it really does go to demonstrate and go to show just how much Eminem want this. They just want to come out and they want to play the cleanest possible siege. These guys are squeaky at the moment. They're not making any mistakes whatsoever. A three-man advantage, and they're still not pushing into sight. We've still got guys just holding angles. We've still got guys jumping into drone and figuring out what's going on. Very impressive stuff so far. And if you're Totem, you've got to be wondering, you know, which page do we need to start flicking to in this playbook to start coming up with an answer for this? Keep in mind, organ attacks, as we know, can be difficult to, to really put to tuition. And for Totem, they have to attack in this game. That is still a half that is ever, ever closer to them. And you want to make sure you can at least pull back, I would say even, if it gets 4-2 for Eminem, that's going to be very difficult. I mean, 5-1, just... <laughs> It's going to be difficult to not see anything but an M&M victory for Oregon. So right now, Totem haven't shown up. Two players still yet to get off the board with kills. Look at the, the kill consistency from m, &M. Everyone at least having two kills. Um, you know, users and Tyrant once again. Are we surprised? Nope. It is worth mentioning Eminem played this map quite a lot inside of the group stage as well. Three times. Played it three times. Yeah. Come away with three wins. And keep in mind that both these teams played each other in Oregon in the group stages. This is a rematch from Group A, and it was in Oregon, and it was a 7-2 for Eminem. There's got to become a time where you start to throw into question Oregon as a map and how it's managed to sneak its way in here. Totem really needs to start coming up with some answers relatively quickly. Mowgli, I don't think we've seen really what this guy's about just yet, then we saw some fantastic yeah, we did. from yeah. Mowgli mm -hmm. last week. I want to see them fight. Oh, oh my life, Tyrant! What are you doing to us out here? You can't fight against that, though, Wally. How? You can't fight against that. How? <laughs> Even Mowgli Hold hitting on. him there with the nice shot. You're turning to me. Can't just... Come on. I mean, this is what this team does to me, Demo. It's exciting to watch. You see Tyrant hitting a nasty flick like that out of nowhere after I'm saying, well, it'd be nice to see a bit more out of mode. Nope, not inside of this round, at least. Neox, he's playing very aggressive at the top of Freezer Stairs. Jiggle Peak in the yard are coming Beautiful. around. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautifully for users to just swing on through and collect that kill. Another two kill opening advantage here for Eminem as the Freezer Hatch is now going to be opened. Neo can choose to rotate around. He's going to be waiting for Tyrant just to call meeting as clear. But Eminem, they've done the hard work in the first half of this round. They have. I wanted to see more from their own game. Couldn't really do anything against that. Um, it looked as if, again, they were just grabbing at something, trying to get a quick kill to try and set them up nicely, going into the, you know, the kind of final execute and having that man advantage. But right now, they've lost two. Eminem, again, in this position, they're not rushing. They're playing it patient. Yeah. They're going to make sure they can carry out their attack. The only worry that I do have for Eminem is 
Are they going to go for the Laundry Freezer? Because if they do, Mirror Windows again exist. That was why they lost the last round. So they need to make sure that they can either formulate a quick blue take or they can actually get rid of those Mirror Windows successfully. Solosov does still have a Twitch drone if he's able to get it into position. Looks as though he's going to hop in that briefly and just test the waters. Eisen coming under a bit of pressure as well as the nade sails on in and just pushes him off the pillar. Solosov still going to be holding on to that angle. He's got the smokes as well, so could use that to try and assist some sort of a push here. Tyrant, a lot of information gathered there. He can call pretty much the majority of that Harry Potter and bottom stair area as clear. Let's see a stray Twitch drone fly on through there as well. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but finally, a kill for Totem. Eisen, he's going to be able to take down Solotov, but still, the net is tightening. Tyrant, he's going to swing on through. He's got a couple of opportunities available to him here, but it's going to be users to take down Link. And a second, the push through Freezer really cutting this site in half as Nello is doing what he does best. The plant now confirmed. Users still inside of the Freezer holding on, and he will collect his third, fourth, excuse me, kill of the round. Yeah, use this phenomenal work inside a freezer. That extra man, that was what it came down to, Ollie. The fact that Uses can kind of let his team do their thing and he just focuses on that kind of lone wolf style, slips into freezer and just cuts them off. They had no idea he was there. They were so focused on Tyrant, trying to feed off that bulletproof information, but then they had no idea about Uses and we've seen the impact that he had. So yeah, very easy for him. Eminem, 4-1 up. They've had a very strong half ollie, and they still have another attack. It's looking good for the Molotovs at the moment. The Molotovs. And the Marshmallows. Can't forget them. Nope. Uh, so, for some reason, people actually don't know that. I thought that was a, well, a known fact. I was trying to Red like earlier, mm -hmm. and he said, what is it about the, the Marshmallows sort of thing for Eminem? And I was like, it's Molotovs and Marshmallows. Yep. Cal will hate us, because Cal doesn't like that people actually he doesn't like that that's how it was invented. He just wants to know it's just Eminem. But then again, your mascot, Cal, it is a marshmallow on fire. It, it kind of gives you the know, game away, doesn't it? You spend a few minutes thinking about it, you probably come up with the answer. It's a ninja marshmallow with, with flames. Downstairs again. Mm. Is that the play? I'm surprised that we haven't seen the tear sharing, you know, the meeting. Meet that has been so popular. It's been very successful also for defenders yeah. a lot of the time. It's been a good bomb site. And I'm surprised that we're not seeing that brought out. I think it would just change things up, change the dynamic. One thing about Eminem, it's something that we, we kind of discussed whenever we seen them play against Ascend on Shelly, was Eminem bring the same lineup. They yeah. do not change. They pick the five operators from the get-go, and that is all you're going to see. Uh, maybe a sledge and a buck. That's the only change you would see. But everything else, it's going to be the same lineup. They're a team that's ready for everything. Still, you've got to draw into question if it is going to be worth to try and change things up here. Obviously, this is the last round of defense for Totem inside of regulations. So they're not going to be able to do anything further here. And they at least feel as though Laundry is their best opportunity for scraping another round away here. There was a bit of an early engagement. Mowgli was ready for Usus on the window at the bottom of White Stairs. Usus did take a reasonable chunk of damage, but managed to get away, as did Mowgli, I think probably more importantly at this point. Totem, they've struggled greatly in that opening engagement, regularly finding themselves as opening picks. They need to try and reverse that stat, keep themselves alive for a little bit longer because they're going into a lot of these engagements three versus five, two versus five, it might be, depending on how successful Eminem's early round has been. This one's been much slower. I think Totem, they've taken a big step back here and they're going to try and lean into that utility a little bit more. E-Box Hatch once again being mavericked. No surprises there. Now he has to take a bit of damage, which is something you have to get used to if you're playing the Maverick on Oregon. But again, another very slow paced round from Eminem. It looks as if the kind of blue take is going to be back for them. This is how we seen them attack the first round. And Neo, a lot kind of rode in the shoulders of Neo. Actually hasn't got a kill since the first round, surprisingly, Ollie. So, but then again, he hasn't really had to, I suppose. It's probably been the, the best way to put it. There's only so many kills out there. Mm -hmm. And when you've got Users and Tyrant throwing eight and six up, Inside six sit, rounds. Sit back and enjoy the ride, I suppose, just, more than anything. Just hold on as best you can. Solotov 
Already done great work on the shock drone this round, it is worth mentioning. Took out the mirror window and is now able to hold on through those back stairs. Interesting rotation as well, bit of a, a switch up from Eminem. They're actually sending Nello over towards Elbow. Last time it was Neo. Neo's the one who's going to have to try and get the diffuser down. And I think it's because they've spotted that this wall is electrified. So you're going to have to get the Maverick holes in. You still need to have some sort of cross section only to make sure the bomb site's cut into and nobody can cut across to try and stop the diffuser going down. Nello's got a really hard job here. There's a couple of ADSs ahead of him as well. Look, we have Neo. seen a push in deep. Cover! Neo, how is he getting away with this? Where's the cover? It is not there. Use this. He's going to find one onto Neox. Nello is going to make it work through the thinnest of angles. Three seconds left and the plan being attempted again by Usus. Diju, he has to try and push up. He's not going to have an opportunity to stop the plan from going down. Instead, he's going to have to get all the kills. Still with a C4 in pocket, will be unsuccessful, but does manage to finish off a downed Nello. Still in the retake, finds himself two as players start to stack up here on the side of Eminem, but eventually will be taken down. Probably the closest round that we've seen to this point, and honestly, a little bit scrappy in the post. Yeah, uh, almost a crucial mistake from Eminem. You just, you cannot let that man just slip up in that position and eliminate your planter. That could have went horrible. Thankfully, Nello made up for it with two kills in that round. And as always, use this with a cleanup. I mean, this, there's a reason why he was able to drop 43 kills in the group stages. It was on this one map. I mean, as much as we, we can talk about Totem, you know, this could be a strong map for them. Whenever you're taking a, a player who is on incredible form, to his best map, you're asking for trouble. You just are. Maybe that's what Totem want. Maybe they want a bit of trouble. Maybe they like a bit of danger. You don't want trouble. You don't want it. Well, I don't think it's any great surprise that a tactical timeout has been called here by Totem. They need to very quickly get their heads in this game. Things haven't been going their way so far. Is a timeout enough at this point? I, honestly, for me, I would have called that halfway through their first phase. I think the rounds on defense are there for the taking mm. and you've got to try and come away with them. These guys are fighting against quite a mountain at the moment. A 5-1 yeah. is where we stand. In favor of Eminem, going onto the defense when you've got Tyrant and Usus who are both absolutely popping off inside of this game yeah. so far, let alone the contributions that we've seen from elsewhere. Everyone's been on the game here tonight. It's been scary. Yeah, you've got two guys who we've seen last time, whenever they were against the Sand, were untouchable. One with 27 kills, one with 25. Now we're seeing in this game, one with 11, one with eight. They haven't slowed down no. since Friday night. They're still rocking and rolling throughout the weekend, and now they're here Monday, and they're bringing the heat. I mean, they're probably not slept, so they're probably still on like this in, in the same vibe of like, yep, still in the same headspace, still, still. I've, I've not moved my gamer chair. They, mm, that's always mm. the key one, isn't it? You can't move yep. your chair yep. if you're on, have if to you're keep on a heater. the position. I actually hear that the users is a fan of actually taping the setup. He actually gets the tape and measures his keyboard, I, so he knows the positioning. I've seen that done before. I've seen players do that at a LAN where they'll bring a ruler or something of the the exact yep. length, and they will literally to be, map out to, be, yep. to make it as, uh, as similar to their home setup. So, obviously it's a 5-1. Everything can change now. We're seeing both sides switch over. But Oregon for me has always been a very close map. But it's very rare you would see 5-1 comebacks. It's very rare you would see that. This is usually for a map that has, you know, the 4-2 splits or it's 3-3 free, free straight down the middle. 5-1s are extremely difficult to come back from. And I do fear for Totem in that regard. And also the fact that they're on the attack makes it... You know, it makes the likelihood, the probability of that yeah. go down even more. It really does. The pressure's on Totem at the moment. And I think that Eminem are going to lean into that a little bit here, it seems. We saw Tyrant at the start of the round just playing with fire a little bit at the top of those freezer stairs. But immediately, as soon as the warning shots start to come through, he's dipped. He's out of there. He does not want to put a blemish on that beautiful KD that he is currently rocking. And there is no need to. Totem have got plenty of problems to solve. They've got... A, a lot of clearing to do here. They've gone for the, the full top floor. I don't even think anyone from Eminem's actually stepped foot up there so far. But Eisen is going to be able to open a couple of vertical angles, mainly onto the top of laundry stairs, just to thoroughly check that there's going to be nothing there to surprise them. Now move on through into meeting. Neo could be a little bit of a problem here. Not sure if that drone will have spotted him or not. It'll have been a very narrow angle of his head if it did. 
but even then, feels the heat, knows he needs to push down. Yeah, I would assume that they're probably going to know somebody could be on those back stairs, and Neo has diverted back over towards Shaikwa, now towards Pillar, so we'll expect to see him kind of hold that until he dies, I would say. That's usually what we see with a lot of the Pillar players, is they're just there to waste some time, utility, get some kills, but more importantly, I think... The guy in Pillar needs to have control of this bunker door. He's the one who needs to put pressure onto the guys looking to push in towards Elbow. Because as we know, the smoke roll, smoke player in this position, he's going to get a lot of utility thrown at him. That, that's a given. So the guy in Pillar needs to make sure that there's always another angle that the token players have to be worried about. So it doesn't look as if there's much pressure going on from Neo and almost gets picked as well. Mowgli is in trying to make entries happen for his side. But surprisingly, Nobody's died yet in this round, only with still 30 seconds to go. I'm not sure how Solotov's got away with this. How has he gotten away with that? Takes down Diju. The flick was beautiful. Mowgli not in position to capitalize on it and still with a nade in pocket. 24 seconds left on the clock as Link starts to push on through into sight. Kills do start to trade. But the advantage leveled out. 3-3. Three to three. Mowgli still trying to make this approach happen through Elbow. He can hold on deep into the site. He can cut through into Freezer as Link will attempt the plant. A push up now is going to have to happen, but Mowgli is in position to deny. Takes down Nello, but will be traded. Neo comes in with a big two. Can he make it a third? He is in a one versus one here. Tyrant is downed. Tyrant maybe going to try and gather a little bit of information, but a solid finish there from Totem. They were able to hold on there inside of the post plant. Both teams pretty much mirroring each yeah. other's attacks, isn't it? It's a complete mirror image. Both teams want to take in control uh, in control of Pillar. I think defenders kind of freeing up Pillar very uh, swiftly also. And then that elbow fight happens. And then that wall is in that prime position for one guy just to sit and hold the flanks. It was very, very close. Eminem almost pulled that back. But without a shadow of the doubt, you cannot argue the impact that Mowgli had in that round. Being yeah. able to create that cover, take those engagements. You can see that uh, the ARX having 20 bullets did, I think, mess up a bit of a kill and also get himself killed in that scenario. So only one thing to watch out for, but still, he did his job. He, ha he held the cover. And as soon as that diffuser gets down, Ollie, we know it's an impossible challenge. It is very difficult, especially with the angles that can be held there. So it's off. Did a great job of holding on. I'm surprised that Solotov got away with playing on elbow for as long as he did demo. Mm -hmm. He did a great job there. He used all of his toxic babe canisters, got a nutty kill, but it just wasn't quite. There was no one to plug the gap. That was the biggest problem. There was no one there to plug the gap. And because it was such a late round, typically you could see that wall pocket reinforced. Yeah. You know, if push comes to shove, you could actually dip out of there, reinforce it, and then have you still have the smoke utility, still have a canister, still have two, something like that, that you can then play from a little bit deeper. So obviously Eminem feeling as though it was a fine margin as well. They're happy enough to come back down here and give it another go. Similar setup for the time being. Another weird coincidence. We're seeing now Totem switch up their attack. It looks as if they're going to be situated for the lobby freezer take. And now Eminem are setting up appropriately for the lobby and freezer take. Someone's Google Drive's compromised. It's, this is weird. <laughs> weird game. Both teams did really well in their blue takes, but they don't want to do back-to-back -back blue takes. It's strange, isn't it? They're dancing the same dance. Baffles me. Unless they feel as though the adaptation is just going to be a little bit too much. Look at Mowgli go. He's already seen the drone get shot. Tyrant. Maybe anticipating that that was an Iana clone and not thoroughly ready for the fight. This is what Totem need. They need somebody to lead by example. Yeah. We, we highlighted Mowgli. Big fan of Mowgli. Thought he did great work in their match against Makers. Right now, things have not been going well for Totem. He is looking to be that driving power. And it's something that Totem need right now. Totem should be playing off this energy. We looked at Totem whenever they were against Makers, always felt as if they were going to be the underdogs. They were always going to be underestimated. And that's whenever they played their best siege, whenever their backs were up against the wall. Is this where we're going to see the best out of Totem? Quite possibly. Mowgli has really turned it on over the course of the last couple of rounds. Neo could be about to see some pressure. He's going to be playing on the back stairs. Instead, chooses to drop back. Still time is going to be a factor here for Totem. Can't rely on Solotov being able to hold on for, to that elbow for as long as he has done previously. 
It's going to be a lot of utility coming his way now, but he goes for a very aggressive swing there. Actually, Chunk's link down somewhat. is isn't going to be enough to deal the finishing blow, but instead, he's going to get himself oh. into an engagement. How is he still alive? Does manage to hit the rotation as Mowgli will be taken down. Users immediately traded out, however. Salt off. There's not enough time or space to get a pocket reinforcement, but it's not required. The mirror window's been placed on 12 bar. That's a beautiful little change-up that we've seen come from Eminem. Yeah, I love that. Uh, the fact that they, they had issues with elbow, that was the main area that Eminem struggled with. They're now trying to adapt. They're trying to put something in the way to kind of slow down Totem. Right now, Totem, they're not in a bad position. They have the man advantage, and they're trying to use this. Look at this rotate coming in from the Ox. That could be it. That could be massive. If he manages to get a kill, it can open up the site entirely for him just to walk in. There is going to be a bulletproof available. I'm not sure if he's got line of sight over onto Neox or not. I think it's more likely looking toward the rear stairs. Link attempting the plant now. Neo has to come up. He's got information. He needs to aggress onto this. Eyes and Neox, they pick up two each. That was the rotate. That was the extra man. Similar to what Eminem did inside of Freezer Reviews is on, that, on the attack where they attacked the basement. Exact same's happened. Both these teams are the same. It is very strange. Very, very strange. Very close matchup. And this is what this is what we want to see. We want to see the best of the best come out. We don't want to see stomps. We don't want to see just teams roll over. This is it. It would be very strange to see 5-1 attacking halves. On Oregon. On Oregon. Wow. You get it occasionally from time to time. But it is by no means common. Mm-hmm. Oh, very, very uncommon. I can't remember the last time i seen that actually happen. We've had it in BR6 a little bit, but that does play a little bit different. Oregon there is a little bit weird. That's last time, though, where it's the region that's attacker-sided. Yeah. You know, so... But in terms of EU, where usually defense is yeah. the key, it is very unusual. Probably about time that Eminem changed things up. Mm -hmm. They have gone for a bit of a different approach. Going to be taking us upstairs. Obviously feeling as though that laundry is pretty well sewn up, and I would agree. I think that Toad's been doing a great job of consistently picking rounds up there. They've both been a little bit on the clutchy side of things, but Toad's been still coming away with the goods. And I think the opening pick that they were able to get, that, especially that off the back of Mowgli's aggression, you just don't really want to be going up against that. Similar to Eminem, again, another similarity. They had the opening pick, they didn't rush, they played it patient, and they waited for their opportunity to use that extra man. Nobody downstairs at the moment from Eminem. No, but there is a man in armory, which is pretty uncommon, a position that we're not used to seeing. And the fact that the hatch is reinforced leads me to believe that Neo is looking to set up a permanent residence in that area. I mean, it's an armory, so there's probably plenty of things that he can use to try and defend himself from, but Mowgli already is really aggressively pushed up and he's got himself into position to try and affect onto that player. He's at least cutting him off for the time being. The Goyo Shield going to get popped. Neo will be droned here. This armor is going to start becoming a very small room as soon as the nades start flying in, whether yep. that's from the window or from the doorway. Yeah, Mowgli, again, he has to just get in a position where he can take this engagement. Looks as if he's going to push aggressive salt over, try and rotate to assist his teammate. Another nade will be cooked. Do they hear the pin? There goes the nade, and there goes the C4, but nothing comes off. Only the Goyo shield gets exploded in that scenario, so still not wasted utility, but that is going to be an area that they still don't have control if they do not have the armor yet. Mowgli still trying to push himself on through and will collect his second kill on the round. A strange place to make your stand. And for Eminem, it hasn't worked for them. Two versus three, just after the halfway point. Tyrant probably can juice himself up on one of the Kona stations and will do so. Totem, taking a leaf out of Eminem's book now, taking the time to drone. They've still got plenty of information available for themselves. They've got tons of time to try and execute and to make this happen. Just need to gather a little bit more information. Neox gets the heads up, going to go for the nade. Thrown from below, we're going to get a great view of that kill onto Tyrant. Easy as you like. Brilliant example at self-sufficient play. Droning your own vertical nade kill. Nello. Now, we saw some clutches from Nello the other day, Demo. We really did see the best of the best of what this guy can offer. He's going to be able to do it here. 45 seconds. He's got to try and hold on. Does have a C4, but he's immediately going to be full white flash. Finds the kill onto Aizen. <gasps> I was panicking. I thought the Totem were going to go one by one, but they do get the refrag off in the end. Yeah, uh, I was thinking, not again, Nello. Not, not another one to add to the belt, but I mean, one thing about Totem, whenever they played against Makers, they never let it slip. Whenever they had that control, whenever they were in the lead, 
they always closed it out successfully. And we've seen the same again. Tome have replied with free attacks of their own m and &M. What is happening to their defense? I mean, all credit to the Totem. They knew what they wanted. I thought their utility was great. I think the refrags was, were even better. Yep. Totem are playing to such a high standard and are really rivaling what Eminem did. Both teams are going bar for bar at the minute. Yep. There's nothing, nothing separating these guys. We've got, you name something and we've got it on both sides. Whether it's vertical nade kills, whether it's droning out and taking time once you've got a man advantage, whether it's just getting the opening kill demo. Both yep. of these teams are attacking. It's like watching a mirror image. It's like watching the same team attack again, as we saw when Eminem were on the attack. It genuinely is that close at the moment. And it's all going to be about which team can break out on defense. Totem were able to pick up one round on defense. Eminem, they need two. Back upstairs we go. Still a reluctance to try that middle floor. Yeah. And you've got to start asking yourself. I think that if Eminem go back downstairs before they, re before they try middle floor, that's when we need to start wondering why are these teams both avoiding? Mm -hmm. That same armory hold looks to be the setup for Eminem, which... I think Neo in, that, in, Neo in that situation, he needed the support. I think as soon as Soltov was killed, he was kind of left defenseless in, in many scenarios. Because then at that stage, if there's a guy in the armory window and a guy pushing your armory stairs, it's a 50-50. Uh, and you either look left, you look right, and you know, we know what Siege is like with 50-50s, all I can swing ever which way. They have placed him on top big tower now. They've actually rotated a Tyrant from him kind of playing an anchor role inside a site. It's a much more aggressive standpoint, almost playing kind of like an Overwatch figure. Maybe it's to gain some information if anyone's looking to go towards that armory window. We could see runouts from the armory, uh, or from the big tower door, and that could snag a kill. So there is potential, but this time now for Eminem, just going to forfeit armory and just play much more minimalistic and just leave Solotov by himself. They've also opened up Attic, both sides of Attic, which is an area that Totem have no interest in attacking. That creates just another angle, another possibility for them. They're actually fully reinforced up now as well. So it looks as if they've just kind of got scared off Eminem and just trying to play as safe as they can. I mean, I've given a lot of the side control away here as well. You saw how clear games was there when Mogli was basically just face checking onto everything. The drone's going to come through now and... I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see Totem try and go for a plant here. They've got a lot of cover in place. Tyrant, not quite irrelevant over inside a big tower, but he needs to make a big play from there. He's been out of the way, kept himself alive. He's got to rotate into Attic though, Wally. Keep that in mind. So he can get back to site pretty quickly. But realistically, he's going to be challenging onto a single door, albeit the, the wall's getting open mm -hmm. now, so he's going to have a little yeah. bit more to go on. But realistically, it could be very difficult. Now, Solotov, is he going to go for the aggressive run out? Yes, he is. And he will collect the kill over onto Neox. The direct focus from Totem, that real hunger and urge to just push in into Trophy, is going to start damaging them at this moment in time. Yuzis gets taken out there off the back of some good drone information from Aizen. But where is Tyrant to respond? He is instead going to be inside of Attic taking down Mowgli. Yep, great work from Tyrant. That extra man inside a tower, they rotate it away to see if he could make an impact, Ollie, that you asked, and it looks as if he did. Ice is only getting in the kitchen now, Ollie. It seems just a little bit too late to start looking to rip up the floor, and Nella will find Lake. As he did eliminate Solotov, DJ just had to walk in, but he himself also gets eliminated by Nello. And like we said, Aizen, a little bit too late to start ripping up the floor at this stage. And now he's in a one versus three, which is not looking good for him. Has to push up in towards the white stairs, but there's so much utility. A C4 somehow does not kill him, Ollie. Fires a bunch of flashbangs through the door, but look at Eminem, patient, setting up a triple crossfire, just waiting for him to walk in. It's only a matter of time, it feels like. Aizen, what's he gonna go for? Time slowly ticking away, more swings come in. And Tyrant will collect that kill. Eminem will break this struggle that they've had on the defense, and they push themselves to match point. I really enjoy the setup there from Eminem. They went for exactly the same utility setup inside of Armory and inside of Master, but they didn't play it with bodies. Yeah. They instead rotated out. They played from much deeper, and they gave themselves options. Maybe they knew that Totem would tunnel vision onto those key areas, and again, go for that very minimal take. Where was the player on big window? Where was the player pushing into Attic at the appropriate time and moment? You can't just cut Attic in half. You can't just jump in through the window. If there's someone in big tower, you need a full clear. Must have been a bit of miscommunication, because... Tome did really well off finding out the Thunderbird, which was used in that scenario. They had the yellow pings, was able to drop then onto the attic window, get an easy kill. Whenever that attic kill happened, Tyrant tried to respond, getting a kill, 
and didn't didn't find the guy in the window. Why was that information not being called out one guy big tower? Because it almost looks as if Mowgli ran into Attic, had no idea he was there. It looked to be a bit of a surprise, but maybe they didn't know there was a rotate. I think that must be it. They must have known there was a rotate between big tower and Attic. And that, at the minute, is the difference. The difference is that the information that's been gathered in the early part of the round, it's a comment we made about Eminem's attacks, they were really good at figuring out where the setup was and what they needed to do to try and attack into that. Now, Totem have done the same information gathering, but they didn't have the man count. They didn't have the same body count, and they didn't have the knowledge as to where every defender was. Now we see a little bit of a switch up. We are going back downstairs demo, but seeing as we've seen a site one, it's not as bad. But Eminem have been unsuccessful down here twice so far. Yeah, and Eminem played it very slow. Just anchor on site, the kind of turtle formation. You don't really rear your head unless you need to. Now they're changing things up. This is a very heavy roam game. You're extending in towards kitchen. There's a guy playing big tower. In many instances, Ollie, this is a suicide spot. This is You're asking to get killed if you're against a good solid side who know how to take big tower. I assume Totem can do that. I think Totem have been very well coordinated on their attacks so far, apart from that bit of a mishap in Attic in the last round. So this is a big risk from Eminem, and they're really relying on Tyrant getting lucky with a few of these engagements because realistically Totem should just be able to, to pick them off. Well, Nade's going to start to come in. Neo collects the first kill and Nade will be sent in onto Tyrant, but somehow he manages to stay alive. Eventually will be down to deal a bit of damage in onto Mowgli. Users was at the bottom of meeting, but has since rotated. Tyrant accepting his fate up there. But with an opening kill coming in onto Diju, it levels things out. Still at a four versus four. I mean, I'm going to feel pretty good about that. It's a couple of nades wasted, and we've seen how big the nades have been late on. That's what I was going to say. The nades have been crucial for Totem in terms of clearing out different positions. But you can see Eminem, after they've got that kill, they know that Totem are going to be lacking on the nades. They're going to be lacking on, I think, that extra man. You know, we talked about how well Totem have played whenever they have that opening kill, whenever they have that man advantage. So don't give them anything else. I say that, though. Look at Solotov. He's still on the prowl. I mean, Solotov's trying to be the difference maker. We haven't seen very many flanks so far this game no. as a whole. No. Now, in contrast to the way that we saw Eminem play earlier on against Ascend, we did see them attempting quite a few flanks. We did see that play style and that mentality coming out of them, but it's not been there so far. So it could very well catch Totem off guard here if Solotov is able to get into position. It's nothing too extravagant at the moment. He's just going to be on those white stairs, but he does have the freebie. option. It's going to be a freebie in onto security. Thank you very much onto Neox, but he, the wall will be open behind him. How does he get that kill onto Eyes? And that must have been a turn and a burn. Mowgli finds one, but immediately will be traded. Two versus one, Link. Not quite inside of the site just yet. Does have the diffuser, 30 seconds to play with. Prefires will give his position away here, but he does have a couple of drones at his feet that can maybe provide a little bit of information, but Eminem aren't for moving. Yellow Ping's coming out. Nello with the swing to collect. Eminem, they are going to take map one inside of this best of three. Eminem, we'll see how that game where at moments it wasn't looking too good for them, but Oregon will still go their way. Solotov, we mentioned that, Oli. We've seen very little Rome game from either side. And the one time that we see some Rome game, it is the difference maker inside of that round. Great, great stuff from Eminem. But a lot of their work was done in the early stages. That 5-1 half was monumental for them. It really was. And you look, at, you look at players like Tyrant, you look at players like Yuzus, they had great attacks. They kind of dropped off a little bit on the defense, I think it's fair to say. And it was other players that were stepping up to the plate. It was the likes of Solotov, it was the likes of Neo, and it was the likes of Nello, really just trying to get themselves in and amongst that conversation. Eminem there being the difference makers, they were able to pick up rounds on the defense. Where we saw a very attacker sided Oregon, which is a little bit unusual, but it is testament to both of these teams in how well they were approaching those attacks. I think the Totem have done a great job there in terms of how we saw them trying to manage, especially downstairs into those laundry attacks, because it isn't an easy thing to try and do. Sure. Totem, they've lost the first map. There is still another map to go. I think also the fact that Mowgli looks to be fired up. If he yeah. can bring that same energy and from the first round, just bring all of that against Eminem, they could start off equally as strong as what Eminem did on Oregon. Quite possibly. Well, we will get to find out. Our next map, of course, is going to be Clubhouse. But before that, a very short break, and then we'll be back with the desk.